Miss Melinda here, your spiritual advisor from MissMelinda.com, here to bring you part five of our last video in our series on shadow work with the Tarot. Quick recap, shadow work is when we do work to uncover those modes of behaviors, those defense mechanisms, those mental mechanisms and emotional mechanisms that we put into place within ourselves, that our psyche put into place within ourselves as a result of pain and trauma and negative occurrences, negative situations. It is typically not the event that we are uncovering. It is typically not the memory that we are uncovering. But what we really aim to do with shadow work is uncover those mechanisms within our psyche, within our emotional worlds, within our modes of being that we've put into place as a result of those negative situations and the mechanisms that are holding us back from being who we truly are and from gaining what we truly want to gain out of life, from being fully ourselves and from being fully authentic. So when we use tarot to help us with shadow work, what we're doing is looking at the shadow aspects of the tarot and using that as a mirror to reflect back onto ourselves and saying, where does the shadow aspect of this tarot card exist within me? How can I apply that to or use that as a clue to lead me deeper into my own growth, to lead me deeper into uncovering those aspects of myself that I need to uncover in order to flourish, in order to be more authentic, in order to be fully myself. So the first card that we're going to look at is the world card. And you may think that the world card doesn't have a shadow side, but something that we can acknowledge with the world card is that it points towards wanting and longing for deeper fulfillment, deeper connection, deeper wholeness. So that would be the first place that we can look at when we are using the world card to assist us with shadow work. We can look at ourselves and say, where is it in my life that I'm longing for more connection or more fulfillment or more completeness, a more um, well-rounded, integrated kind of experience? What is it I'm longing for or that I feel I'm lacking in my life or that I think would allow me that kind of wholeness that I am missing, right? That kind of fulfill fulfillment that I'm missing. So do you often long for a deeper connection with other people? Are you longing to have creative expression? Are you longing to have a deeper connection with nature? What is it that you long for? And look to that longing. Look to where you feel the gap within you or where you feel the emptiness in your life. Look towards that to lead you into your shadow material, to lead you into those mechanisms that you have put into place that are preventing you from it. See where it leads you. It's like a it's like a trail of breadcrumbs, right? And we can use the, the cards as a tool to just assist us with going deeper. So with the world card, the first thing would be to start with what you're longing for, what you're lacking, what you're missing. The second thing we can look at with the world card is that the world card often tells us we have a second chance or even a third or a fourth chance. So one big clue to our shadow work with the world card would be that it's something we've tried to work on before and we weren't completely successful at. And the world card would actually be giving us a word of encouragement here, telling us that we've now learned what we need to learn. We have the wisdom, we have the tools, we have the techniques. We're fully equipped now to tackle this situation and to come out on top and to gain more wholeness from it, to gain more integration, um, more, uh, yeah, more integration within ourselves. So the world card can also be offering us a word of encouragement and a clue telling us to look for something in our past, something that we've worked on already, we've tried to work on and we weren't, weren't totally successful at. It's time for us to kind of go back, reassess that, and this time we'll be much more successful. The next card is the sun card. 
And the Sun card is also a card that you may think doesn't have a shadow side. But in this instance, what the Sun can be telling us is that we don't have enough clarity. In other words, we're allowing ourselves to become clouded. And there are many ways that we can allow ourselves to become clouded. There are many ways that we can allow ourselves to become distracted from what we truly want or um, who we truly are or what we really think is right, right? So one example would be um, distracting yourself every time that negative or unwanted emotions occur. So every time you get sad or frustrated or depressed, you distract yourself with escapism like movies or binge watching TV, or perhaps you escape through food or alcohol or over exercise or socializing too much. There are lots of ways that we can use escapism to distract us. There are lots of ways that we can allow our clarity to become clouded so the Sun card would be telling us in our shadow work that we need to be clearer with ourselves about what it is we're thinking what it is we're feeling we need more clarity there and we need to pay more attention in order to go deeper into our shadow work we're never going to be able to go deeper into our shadow work unless we start paying attention to what we're feeling and what we're thinking and unless we start to be true to what it is we really want so the other aspect of this is that the sun card could be telling us the way that we're allowing ourselves to be clouded is by giving into what other people want or giving into what we think we should want or what we think other people want us to want instead of being really true to our own feelings instead of standing up for what we believe in instead of standing up for what we feel or what we think is right that's another way that our clarity could be clouded so think of the sun card as letting you know that you need more clarity and that you are clouded in your feelings or in your thinkings, in your intentions, or in your actions, right? The strength card is the next card, and the strength card is about taming the beast within us. And the strength card is really about a gentle, focused kind of determination. It's about allowing ourselves to be in alignment with our willpower. It's about learning to focus our minds, and it's about staying true to our determination in a way that is steady, gentle, consistent, and it's about really just staying true to our paths. But when we have to tame our inner beast, it means that we're allowing something within us to overcome, to overcome our focus, to overcome our willpower. We're allowing ourselves to be distracted from our willpower or we're allowing ourselves to be overpowered by something within us. So we need to sit back and ask, um, what is it that I want to focus on that I don't seem to be able to focus on? Um, in what way do I often allow myself to become distracted in what way do I often um, allow my willpower to fall by the wayside? Um, in what way am I, do I give in easily rather than staying uh, on the path of my vision, you know? Um, and this can be about other people distracting us or allowing ourselves to be distracted by other people, but there's always going to be a deeper meaning. You know, why are you doing that? And what is the belief behind it? What is the mode of thinking or the mechanism that you have put into place that allows you to do this? Why, right? What we're always asking with shadow work is why. Okay, so why do I allow myself to be distracted? Why do I allow myself to have weak willpower? Why do I allow myself to be easily deterred from my own focus? 
Why do I start out on a goal and then allow myself to be easily distracted? Why? So there's going to, this is just a clue that leads you deeper into what you need to examine within yourself. And like so many of the other cards, there can be cards around the strength card that are going to help point you in the right direction and provide you with some more clarity, depending on the spread that you're using. The High Priest is such a powerful card. And one of the things that the High Priestess can be telling you in shadow work is that you're ignoring your own intuition. Two things here. One, you're ignoring your own intuition and you already know what it is you need to be paying attention to. You already know what you need to be working on. You've already received tons of clues and you are ignoring those clues, okay? The um, high priestess can also be here to tell you to stop keeping secrets. And if you're keeping secrets in this way, then you already know that you're keeping secrets. So she can be asking you to examine why you feel the need to keep secrets from other people. And those can be small secrets or they can be big secrets. They can be harmless or they can be harmful. Um, actually, in shadow work, one of the key places that we can look is if we feel an urge to keep a part of ourselves fiercely protected, if we consistently feel an urge to keep aspects of ourselves secret from others, then there's something there that needs to be delved into. There's something that we're actually trying to keep from ourselves. So we need to examine why is it that we don't feel safe to show other people who we are or why is it that we feel that we need to maintain control over ourselves by keeping ourselves from, from being fully seen, right? So like with everything else, this is just a clue that leads you deeper. And what the high priestess is saying is that your secrets are the things that are going to assist you with going deeper into your shadow work. The Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is here to say that you can start with your shadow work by looking at your thinking. Are you overanalyzing? <laughs> Are you um, being overly analytical in relationships? Are you relying too much on practical, logical information and not enough on your heart? In what ways is your sharp mind, is your intelligence being used against you and why? why she's asking you to look at the way that you think and to determine how the way that you think is related to destructive modes of behavior or modes of behavior that prevent you from being fully and wholly yourself or from getting fully what you want to get in life and a lot of times this is about it's about like a sharp mind, right? Think about that sword. So it can also be about sharp words. Are you quick to quick with your tongue? Are you quick to be sharp and defensive with other people? Are you do you allow over analysis and overthinking to hold you back from doing things? Do you get caught up too much in your thinking so that it ends up paralyzing your actions? Do you overanalyze other people to the point where it hinders your relationships and doesn't allow you to actually have um, authentic heart-to-heart -heart communication with them. So this is where you can begin to do your shadow work. When the Queen of Swords comes up, she says, ask yourself why you're allowing this pattern of thinking to continue. What, what does it serve for you? What does it get you and what does it protect you from? These are two really important, helpful questions that we can ask in shadow work. If, if I already know that this specific mode of behavior is related to my shadow work, then the next place that I can get to make some progress with this is what is it getting me or what is it protecting me from? How does it serve me or how does it protect me, right? The next thing is the devil card. So this is a an easy one for shadow work, but the devil card can relate to a couple of different areas within us. It can relate to addictions, and it can also relate to the way in which we create bondages for ourselves. So most often with the devil card, the way the bondages that it's talking about are 
mental bondages within our worldview or within the way that we within the way that we see the world, within the way that we see life, and within the way that we see ourselves in the world. So for example, some ways that people commonly create bondages for themselves in their worldview are within um, concepts of money, abundance, and prosperity. Uh, A common thing is that people think everyone with money is a terrible person. So when you allow that to be your worldview, then you're setting yourself up for a blockage of acquiring money. You won't acquire money if you don't want to be a terrible person and everyone with money is a terrible person. Just one example. Another example would be a belief such as, If I wasn't born into money, then I'll never have money, right? So that's a worldview that is creating a blockage for you. These are some examples of the ways in which our worldview can be bondages for us. The devil card, when applied to this, when applied to our shadow work and pointing towards bondages that we that we place upon ourselves can be telling us, hey, look at your worldview. What is it that you believe about yourself in the world and what is it you believe about how the world works or the world around you that is really holding you back? What's no longer serving you? Or why? Why are you allowing that to hold you back? Is it really what you believe or is it just covering up a fear? Is it protecting you? How is it serving you, right? So start asking why. The other thing that the devil card can be pointing towards are addictions. Now, this is not black and white. This doesn't just mean an alcohol addiction or a drug addiction. It can be food addictions. It can be clothing. It can be shopping. It can be all kinds of things. It can be greed. It can be money addictions. But it can also be emotional addictions and um, chemical addictions that have to do with our biology. So people can be addicted to stress. They can be overworking because they're addicted to stress. Uh, people can be addicted to um, the ups and downs of drama in relationships or the, the roller coaster of highs and lows within relationships. They can be addicted to specific patterns of being within a relationship, such as codependency. So there are many addictions that we can have, and the devil card can be asking you in your shadow work to look at what you're addicted to. So what you could do in that situation would be to look at one of the most challenging patterns in your life. Let's say that, for example, that relationships are your most challenging pattern in life. So you can start with your most challenging pattern and then you can ask yourself, am I actually addicted to this pattern? If I were addicted to this pattern, how would it be serving me? What would I be getting out of it? Try on some ideas for size. Am I addicted to adrenaline? Am I addicted to stress? Am I addicted to the the highs and lows of emotional drama, right? So just, just start trying on those ideas and asking yourself if this is true for you and why. And this is one way to start delving into what you may be addicted to in your life or what the devil card may be showing you to further examine for your shadow work. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and comment. Be well and be blessed.